Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel where my trusty notebook and I discuss topics that interest me. So if any of it interests you, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more from me. In today's video, I wanted to talk about how you can save money in your early 20s, especially if you're starting from zero or you're working a minimum wage job, you're just out of college or you're just finishing up college and you, you're going to be graduating with, with a bunch of student debt. My very first tip, and this is the toughest one, but the most valuable one that I can give to you guys. My first tip is pay yourself first. By paying yourself first, I mean track your expenses, take a look at what you're going to be spending on on a bi-monthly basis or on a monthly basis and anticipate your regular expenses like rent, car payments, groceries and stuff like that. And whatever is left out of the money that you're bringing in, instead of putting that towards the immediate goal that you have, which is maybe a vacation or something expensive that you'd like to buy, I'd say pay yourself first for the time that you are spending working um, and then take the remnants for your other expenses. This way, you're A, rewarding yourself for your time because your time is valuable. And secondly, you're going to be able to accumulate some savings on the side without thinking too much about it. You're just going to think of it as, oh, I'm just paying myself for my time, which is a totally fair way to look at it. My second tip is to track your expenses. I know this one can be a tedious one, but these days there are so many apps that you can use to track your expenses uh, or even track them in a little notebook like this one. I used to use a spreadsheet when I did do it for an extended period of time, but normally if I have, if I know I'm going to be saving for a goal that's coming up in a year or so, I'll just use a notebook too. I think tracking your expenses is extremely useful because it allows you to take a look at all your expenses right in front of you for the for the time period, like the month or the week, and maybe it'll give you some ideas about what expenses you can delay to another date or cancel altogether. For instance, if you're looking to buy a pair of shoes, but you also want to buy a car in another year or something, maybe you can thrift shoes or maybe you can delay on those on buying those shoes and focus on the bigger goal, which is getting your car. And tracking is the best way to take a look at that because it's all right in front of you and will allow you to, to see if there's anything that can get you that one step closer towards the goal that you're looking to save for. My third tip is to do your self-maintenance at home. Now, self-maintenance can be beauty-related things, it's like getting your nails done or getting your hair done regularly or getting a facial done regularly. Now, this one doesn't apply to you if you don't necessarily do these activities. Maybe it won't give you the perfect finished look that you're going after, but it can really help you to save money in the long run. And you might not need to skip them altogether. Maybe you can just start doing them outside uh, less frequently and taking care of stuff like that more at home. And there are lots of tools available that are skincare related, hair related, nails related that you can use to do your self-maintenance at home and eventually save a lot more in the long run. If you're seeing value in any of these tips so far, please be sure to hit the like button. Now my fourth tip for you is to learn how to cook if you don't already know how to. This one's a really tricky one because everybody loves takeout. I love takeout too. But apps like Uber Eats, Foodora, DoorDash, Postmates, all these are just going to rack up the bills. Once in university, I was paying as much for food-related expenses as I was for rent. And that's crazy. That should not be happening. Now, during the quarantine, I know that food can really be a source of comfort for a lot of people. But this is one that should be a non-negotiable for you. Try and reduce your takeout to maybe once a week, once every two weeks and see how that helps your health and your expenses in the long run. The one good thing about being in quarantine is now you have so much more time to learn how to cook and um, experiment with different recipes and maybe you'll discover that you're a really good cook while you're at it. Groceries cost so much less than takeout does. Now, if you're someone that eats out very regularly, that is more than four times a week or so, I know this can be a little tough to do at first, but it really is possible. You don't always have to go with the most complicated recipes, but it's definitely worth a try to learn how to cook. And besides, cooking at home will really allow you to experiment with recipes and you might end up finding things that are outside your comfort zone that you really enjoy eating too. My fifth tip for you is transportation related costs. Now, this one might be tough if you're in a city where you absolutely must have a car to drive around. But if you live in a big city where the public transit is actually pretty accessible, I'd highly recommend saving money on insurance costs, on gas costs, on, on car maintenance costs, and just taking the public transit instead. As an example, taking the public transit in the city that I live in costs about $100 a month, while on the other hand, owning a car 
costs around $500 to $600 a month instead. Sometimes owning a car can be three to five times more expensive than taking public transit. And taking public transit versus owning a car is not just less expensive for you, but it's also better for the environment and for your health. The final tip that I have for you guys today is to live with roommates whenever you can. I know that most of us would really value our privacy and would prefer to just have a place to ourselves. It's so important to compromise and try and live with others because it's so much cheaper to do so. And while you're at it, I have an additional tip for when you're renting. When you rent, try not to spend too much money on furniture. If you can, try and look for listings that already have rooms that come with furniture in them and not only will that make it easy for you to move from one place to the other, it will also allow you to save a lot of money in the long run and it's so much better for the environment too. Try and reserve the room setups that you see on Pinterest and websites like that for when you own your own home. Try to delay buying furniture for as long as you can, especially when you're renting because not only is it easier for you to move from one place to the other, it reduces a lot of waste in landfills and will also be significantly cheaper for you in the long run. It doesn't mean you can't decorate the place that you're living in, it just means that you need to kind of trim down on what you're going to choose to spend on and instead of spending on bigger pieces that will involve m much more money even when you move to another place, you could spend on smaller things that give you the vibe that you're going for. In my personal experience, moving has just been so much easier and cheaper when you have less furniture and why not save that expense on a big piece of furniture for when you own a home and you know you're going to be in there for a really long period of time. If you found any of those tips valuable, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content from me. Additionally, if you'd like for me to make more detailed videos on any of the topics that we discussed, please be sure to comment down below. Thank you for watching and I hope you're having a great day or night wherever you are.